Hold on. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Bill, for offering to get interviewed. Um, I think we all sort of know you in different roles. And um, I think this is a good way for us to all sort of hear things maybe some of us know or don't know or want to know more about. Um, I think these things always go better if people jump in and ask their questions as well. Um, and I will monitor the chat. So if you want to plop your question in there instead of asking, perfectly acceptable to do that as well. Um, do you want to start by just giving us a little bit of your background? Sure. Uh, give you a summary of my life uh, so far as as probably so, some of you know that know me well, I um, accidentally uh, started a family really young. I actually got married two weeks before my 17th birthday. Um, my wife was 16 and uh, that's a long story. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure you all know how that happens, but um, just, uh, you know, getting married was the you know, the right decision for us. I think at the time I graduated from Bonnie Eagle uh, in three years, um, only needed about 18 credits back then to do that. Went in the army, uh, did that for six years, um, had another uh, had another boy. So uh, my, my two oldest are, are getting up there, I've already given me grandchildren. Um, Got uh, three of those. Um, <clears throat> after the army, got out, uh, came back to Maine, um, tried to find my way. It was 1993. Um, the economy was really bad. Uh, unemployment was really high. It was really tough to find work. I worked three or four jobs at a time to make ends meet. And then my um, uh my mom and my stepfather, Mark Floor, were both in real estate, had been for a couple of years and encouraged me to, to get in the business. Um, they were working at Century 21 in Standish at the time. So I did that. Um, that seemed to work out, even though I'm, I'm really introverted by nature. Um, so this was in 95 and, you know, computers and the internet were kind of just starting to to be a thing, email. Um, I don't think we had any social media yet, may, maybe LinkedIn, but um, uh, that, that worked for me because that uh, I was pretty good with computers, had had, you know, got to work with them in junior high um, and stuff. So uh, was able to make the real estate thing work. My dad uh, gave me uh, some of the scraps that he didn't, you know, want to work with. I sort of, um, uh, got my start in Parsons Field and Porter and some of those areas that, uh, you know, nobody really wanted to go to at the time. And um, the funny thing is, so um, I, I always tell the story, like the, des the designated broker of the company at, at the time that I worked for Century 21, I don't think she saw like the internet or, or technology, like that train was barreling down the tracks on us. And I don't think she saw it coming. We had one computer in the office um, for like a dozen agents and she would come in railing because, you know, all she saw us new agents doing was sitting around uh, wasting our time on the computer. And, um, you know, little did she know that we were, you know, doing research, you, you know, uh, you know, f finding our way in this new, you know, tool that we had. And, um, you know, I eventually got busy enough that I couldn't wait. I mean, you had, it was crazy. You had to wait for computer time to get on, you know, I don't know, a computer was like $5,000. So, um, it wasn't anything that just any new agent, you know, could have. And, uh, so I eventually just wanted basically a loan so I could buy my own. And um, uh, I, th I think she offered to, to lend me half the money or something, which was pretty much like a no. And uh, it was around that time that um, Mark Stimson Realtors recruited me. And um, I didn't wanna go to Portland to work. I wanted to stay out in the rural areas where I grew up, where everyone I knew lived. And um, they said, oh, that's fine. We'll just help you open your own office. And I'm like, 
you know, I, I'm 25. I think I had just become an associate broker. I'm like, how can I open my own office? And they're like, oh, it's easy. We'll, we'll show you. And uh, pretty much they did. Um, my, my dad had actually gone to work uh, to be the broker of another company um, at the time, uh, Country Properties in Buxton that later became Agency One and then um, eventually joined Timran. And I, I think maybe they're still Bean Group. I don't know what, what the Buxton office over there is doing, but uh, but my, my dad was working for the Van Hertels, but um, he, he came to be the broker because obviously I needed a broker um, at the time. And we became partners and opened our own Mark Stimson uh, company. Um, did that for a year. Um, they sold to DeWolf. <laughs> Uh, we did dual for, I think, four years until they sold out to Caldwell Banker. Um, probably did that for four years. Um, and then the market crashed um, in uh, 2006, seven. I think I held on till 2008 and um, eventually sold to uh, the Masiello Group, Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, didn't want to do that, hated to do that. I ha actually had four, four offices at one point. My, my timing couldn't have been worse. I, I had an office in Standish, had an office in Hollis. Both of those were pretty strong. Um, but then uh, I jumped down to Springvale and we actually had a little satellite office in Waterboro as well. And so I, I was just stretched way too thin. I was $100,000 in debt and... Um, and uh, basically needed a lifeline um, to survive. And uh, Masiello had offered to buy me uh, one other time. And, and that was when the market was good. And their offer was um, $100,000 cash plus residuals. Uh, but by the time the market had crashed, um, they, there was no money <laughs> up front at all. Um, there was still the residual thing, which is usually how real estate companies are sold. And I had no choice. I had to say yes. And um, did that immediately hated it, uh, could not work for someone else, um, especially anything that was anywhere near corporate. I mean, we had to fill out requisitions to order toilet paper for the office. I mean, it was just it, it was awful. Uh, but I had a four year non-compete. Um, actually never left, uh, the Standish office that, that was all we had left, uh, when I sold was we had, had closed everything down, uh, re reconnoitered in the Standish office, um, which was in the shopping, uh, Hannaford shopping plaza at the time. And, um, uh, a year later, after they bought us, they ended up uh, closing that office because they had a long-term lease in Gorham, um, and, uh, and, and that pissed a bunch of people off, in, including myself. My dad owned the office building that we were in in Standish. Um, we, we eventually moved out of the plaza and uh, in our current location. And him and I never left that building. He had to rent out the building to, to make ends meet um, to uh, a financial services company. But we never left the building um, ourselves. Of course, we didn't have a real estate sign out, but we just worked from there. And um, literally the day after my non-compete was up, I, I already knew I wasn't staying at the Masiello Group. And in the meantime, I had met some agents um, with Maine Real Estate Network and knew that that was what I wanted to do. Seemed like a great company. And so immediately uh, opened franchise office of that. And that that's probably where, you know, I met a lot of a lot of the folks, you know, that I know now, I was fortunate, almost every agent um, that I had had before I sold had stayed on uh, with Masiello and they, they all came back, um, which I was tremendously uh, grateful for. And, um, you know, we just sort of started kicking butt again in, in sad six and, um, you know, then Gorham came and then the Timron off, you know, then Timron sold. And, you know, I, I think that pretty much picks us up, you know, where we are now, I think. Awesome. When Take me back to um, in 95. How did you find out about new listings then? And like, what was the... 
Oh, it was, well, it was great, especially for, you know, for an introverted person. I mean, people, nobody had a computer. There were no real estate websites. I mean, people literally would just walk in the office. You know, we had duty time. There were two shifts a day and you, you tried to get as many, you know, most of us tried to get, you know, you, you were lucky if you could get a couple shifts a week. And of course the Monday morning shift was the best, you know, it seemed like. But uh, yeah, people just, the phone rang and people said, come list my house <laughs> or they walked in the office and said, I need to buy a house. And like I said, it was, it was great. I mean, uh, like I said, the market was horrible. I think my first sale, my, my seller, uh, it was a, a Gambrell in, in Steep Falls for like 99,000 and my seller still had to bring a few thousand dollars to closing because uh, the market was so horrible, but we were taking listings for a year and, um, you know, taking our little uh, rolls of film to the, uh, for, first you had to go to the mall to get, um, you didn't want to waste a 24 or 36 exposure roll of, you know, Kodak. So you'd go to the mall to the camera shop to get the the 10 or 12 exposure rolls. Cause that was all, I think the ML, I mean, you could only get one picture in the MLS book. We, we still had the books at the time. They might have let you have three or five pictures uh, once the MLS became computerized. So, you, you know, you just, there was not a lot of point in having more than, you know, 10 or 12 pictures. So we, we'd get those, take them down to Hannaford, get them overnight, you know, developed. And uh, I, I was really fortunate to, 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 you know, have seen, you know, I got a glimpse of what real estate was like, you know, before technology, but then also got to see how to, how to implement it, um, you know, the way it was, was coming along. Um, but um, yeah, but yeah how long did that book come out? I think it, it might have been once a month or every two weeks. Okay. Um, and of course, you know, we were, it said right on the cover, you know, you, that you weren't, al we weren't allowed to give the books out, but we all did. Like what, once we got the new books, the old books were still, you know, you could still use them because listings weren't selling very quick. It was taking six months or more to sell a house. So, you know, we'd pass those books along to our best customers, you know, who were, who were looking and, and then they could kind of reference, uh, you know, reference the listings that way. But um, yeah, they kept the books for for a, way longer than they needed to. They were actually uh, the the realtor boards actually sold them, not the MLS, I think. So it, it was actually a money maker for the for the realtor boards. They hated to get rid of them, but eventually they, of course, made no sense. But yeah. Um, Imagine doing that today it would be good for like 24 hours and we need a new book. <laughs> Oh, well, and even the MLS, you had to, uh, it took all night to download the new M MLS data and you had to do it on a tape drive and, and literally your computer had to run all night to download <laughs> the new MLS to the tape drive so that you could access the, the information. I mean, it was, like I said, it was, it was crazy and it, and it just, it changed so fast. I mean, it was, I, I can't even believe it now, but um it changed pretty quick. So. All right, I think it's my turn. So, Bill, as long as I've known you, you've been a high producing agent, top producing agent. Um, the last 20 years or so, when you've been in real estate, you've seen a lot of changes, not just in technology, but with our culture as well. What have you done to build your business, but also what have you done to kind of evolve yourself with the business as the culture changes and technology changes? Wow, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, well, like I said, that the introverted part of me, you know, made it tough. Like people always assume real estate agents, you know, are extroverts. And I, I think there's actually more introverts, you, you know, than, than, you know, people realize in the business, but, you know, you really only have to be able to do, you know, we're usually only dealing with like, you know, a couple or, uh, you know, re really small groups of people. So you could do well that way. And yeah, I'd be pretty drained by, by the end of the day. But, um, you know, like I said, getting, getting clients was, uh, you know, a little easier, I think, you know, when they all had to come through the real estate office. So that was, you know, a little bit of a, a, an advantage, I think, at the time. 
Um, but uh, eventually that changed, you know, we all started getting pagers and, and cell phones and, you know, things like that. And, and then Realtor.com, you know, came along and, you know, eventually it got to the point where, you know, people weren't coming into the office, people weren't calling the office and you had to kind of adapt, you know, to that a little bit because, uh, you know, now you had to go out and get, you know, your own clients. I remember um, what, one of the things that was really successful for me, I, I, uh, I, I wasn't really, of course, I left high school early. I was never really in the it crowd, so to speak. Uh, but I, I did hook up with the, the, you know, sort of the leaders of our class. We had a, a class of like 300 students. Um, and uh, I remember, you know, volunteering for the reunion committee so that I basically just so I could get access to the list of all the of all of our past classmates, their addresses. Um, I offered to send out, you know, at my cost, you know, mailings to try to keep in touch with people and, you know, make reunion announcements. And um, so that was, that was fairly successful. I got a lot of business um, and was able to reconnect, you know, with a lot of people, uh, you know, that way, because we didn't have Facebook. We, you know, we barely had email. So, um, so that was, you know, that was really helpful. And, um, you know, again, being the introvert, not really, you know, I didn't want to go to uh, the, 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 the breakfast business meetings or whatever and have to trade, you know, referral leads with people or, uh, you know, go and speak to, to groups or do buyer seminars or, you know, anything like that. So I, I really just had to service the hell out of the people that I got um, and that, um, you know, that really helped a great deal. Like you, you, we, we don't have to be good at everything. Um, I don't think in this business, we don't have to do what other people, uh, do, but you have to be, you know, you have to be willing to do something. You can't say no to everything. And, you know, if you've got a weakness in one area, there's just like cold calling. I I've just never done that. I would never do it. I just don't, I don't, I don't like doing it. I don't like talking to strangers on the phone. I don't even like talking to people that I know that I know and they like me. Like, I don't want to bug them. You know, I don't want to call and, and interrupt their day and they know I'm just calling for business. So I really just try to be uh, super available to respond really quickly. I mean, obviously, if I was, you know, with my family doing something, then you know, then that's what I was doing. And I wouldn't let that be interrupted. But there were just a lot of times when it was convenient. Um, and I could take a quick call and I could uh, answer a question. And, you know, that worked really well for me. And my family, um, you know, was was super supportive. The kids were, were supportive. Um, my ex-wife was super supportive. Um, and, you know, I mean, <laughs> The, the kids were funny. We'd be, you know, we eventually got a camp, which uh, th there did become a point when I realized I was going to, you know, being a top producer was great, uh, you know, and all that. Um, but I was burning a candle at both ends. And I think, you know, we all have to be aware of, you know, when we get to that point that we either need help or we need to delegate or we need to, um, you know, not be taking everything on. And um, I eventually got to that point. Um, I bought a camp a couple hours up north. I, I really feel like that saved my life. Um, because just getting a little bit out of town, I mean, I still had my cell phone, I still could do email on my phone, but I wasn't going to work work, I couldn't show houses, I wasn't going to go on any appointments. Um, but I would work my my, my ex wife would drive. Uh, you know, I, I could work uh, while she drove and, and take some calls and, and, and that sort of thing. And the kid, the kids would actually mock me from the back seats. Uh, you know, when I'd answer the phone and I'd be like, you know, uh, uh, our old company was called, you know, Friends and Neighbors Realty, whether it was Mark Stimson Friends and Neighbors Realty, Wolf Friends and Neighbors Realty, we, we, we always got to keep that moniker, you know, so I'd be, you know, Friends and Neighbors Realty, this is Bill. And I could hear the you know, the kids in the background, friends and neighbors, realty, this is Bill, you know, and uh, I, I would have to stop myself from laughing. But, um, but yeah, it's been it's been a wild, wild ride, you know, getting, you know, dealing with all the changes in technology and, 
um, you know, trying to keep up, keep up with that. What do you think is one tool that you could just not live without in your business? Like what's the one thing that you really rely on? I mean, definitely my cell phone. I mean, uh, like I said, when I, when I started the top agents, nobody, nobody had a cell phone when I first started in 95, nobody that I knew. Um, but if you were like a top agent, you had a pager. Um, so like, probably ever you were either a drug dealer or a real estate agent in 95 if you had a pager and and they were only like 15 dollars a month but it was just you know something that when you first started you didn't really need it but i, I got a pager pretty quick um and you know then you could get a cell phone uh, there's a big bag phone you know that you'd put in your car and you know if you taught the reception was was even worse than it is today, which is hard to believe. But um, uh, if you used it, you know, even a reasonable amount, I mean, my, I remember my cell phone bill was like $600 a month, um, which seems crazy, but I was actually doing enough business that, you know, I was willing to make that, that sacrifice and, uh, and, and get the bag phone. But, uh, but yeah, def definitely, um, you know, having that cell phone and, you know, being able to text an email. And, and again, especially for the introverted, you know, person, like just, you know, being able to be, uh, you know, really quick and responsive. I, I know a lot of realtors and a lot of, um, you know, uh, motivational real estate speakers and stuff like that. Like, at least at the time, I, I don't seem to hear it as much now, but um, you know, at the time they were really like, well, you shouldn't be available all the time. You know, you, you should be a professional, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five, that's it. You know, you shouldn't be a slave to people, you know, after hours or weekends or, you know, but I didn't really, I never really looked at it that way. It was just kind of like, I have this amazing life. I have this amazing business. Um, you know, people are calling me for help. They're, you know, they're willing to give me money to help them. And, you know, if I'm available, I'm going to respond. And if I'm not, if I'm, you know, I, I hardly ever missed a, a kid's, you know, sporting event or dance recital or, you know, whatever. So to me, I, I didn't care, you know, as long as I got to pick which 70 hours a week I was working, you know, I didn't really care as long as I could get off the times that I, you know, wanted to be off and be with my family or doing, you know, something that I wanted to do. And, course the extra money didn't uh you know didn't hurt i you know i love music and you know uh you know going to concerts and things like that you know that that stuff costs money you know and uh so you know having having that extra money to do stuff so i never really saw it as a as as a burden and i was glad if other realtors you know I mean, and we all know it still happens to this day people complain about not being able to reach you know, their agent, I, I think it happens a lot less, it used to happen a lot more, because some agents would just, you know, if they didn't have a cell phone, you know, uh, people had to call the office, and you know, they couldn't text them, they couldn't email them, um, or people weren't checking their email, you know, except when they were in the office Monday through Friday. And so it was it was a real uh, good advantage to those of us that were using technology, because, you know, we were reachable. And I, I think we can still offer that. I think it's one of the main things we offer to folks is that, you know, we're available, you know, when, when they need them. And if we're not, then hopefully we have an assistant or, or a teammate that is. So definitely the cell phone. What's something this year that you did in your business that you really wanted to do, but had a lot of anxiety around doing it. And then you just finally did it. And it wasn't as bad as you thought. Like, for example, for me yesterday, I put a video on Facebook and I hate doing videos, but it took, you know, probably five takes. And by the sixth one, I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to do it. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So what's something in the past year or two that you think was, you know, that you did that you felt that you were uncomfortable doing but made you a better agent or made your business better because of it yeah 
Uh, I didn't see yours. I want to check that out. I did. I did see that Andy Nash put one up and I, I was in a car at the time, you know, so I uh, didn't get to listen to it. But I just as soon as I saw it, I was just so proud, you know, uh, that he did it, you know, and I'm so proud of any of our agents that, you know, can do it. And you've got the right attitude. Like n n nobody is sitting there, you know, making fun of any of us that have the guts to do that, which is not me yet. Um, I hope to get there. Uh, but no one's making fun of us because most people don't have the guts to do it. So most people are just, you know, impressed. But, um, you know, for me, it, it wasn't really so much. I mean, de probably definitely in the past year, because um, I think it started around this time uh, last winter. But, you know, no, nobody would say COVID was a good thing, you know, from any standpoint. Um, but just doing what we're doing right now. I mean, I, I hate staff meetings. I mean, as you, as you know, we pretty much, you know, don't have those. I haven't had them in any of my offices for, you know, for a decade or more. Um, and it was for the main reason that like, um, as a lot of you know, I'm, I'm licensed down here in Florida. And I, I think the office I'm in has like 70 agents. And I just went to the first staff meeting uh, since I, I've been down here. And, um, you know, there was like a dozen people there and it's like, you know, that that's what happens is like you have a staff meeting and, you know, agents are out showing properties, you know, we have some part time agents who have other jobs, you know, they got kids, you know, whatever the case may be, but, you know, people can't be there. I mean, being able to do this stuff on zoom and putting yourself in front of the camera. Um, that was super nerve wracking for me like uh, it was just going against all my introverted tendencies to teach a class. Um, I just, it, it made my blood, you know, curdle. Uh, but this past year has definitely, uh, I feel like I've gotten over that. Um, I'm sure I have a lot of improvement to, to do and I want to get even more comfortable with it. I want to get to the point where I can put a video on, uh, you know, on Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever. Um, you know, I keep telling, telling our agents, you need to get on TikTok, you need to get on TikTok. Well, that's because, you know, I wish I had the guts to go on TikTok and make a real estate video and, and you know, teach, you know, say something that, you know, my clients or, or followers would, you know, find educational. And I just don't have the comfort level or guts to do it yet. But I hope, I hope I'll get there. But uh, yeah, no, this, this has been, been great. Um, being able to for being forced to get, get over my camera shyness. Oh, you're doing a good job. Oh, thanks. Uh, thank you for putting all this stuff together. Yeah. Um, as I know you've seen tons of agents in your almost what, 30 years in the business. So you've hired them, you've seen some of them make it and do really well and others that, you know, just don't succeed. What do you think is the key to like being a successful agent from a management perspective from what you've seen? Uh, just showing up and working hard, you know, which, uh, you know, would seem kind of uh, <laughs> obvious, <laughs> Uh, but I'm always surprised. And, and to this day, you know, again, uh, it's been 25 years, uh, I guess almost 26, um, 23 that I've, you know, been, uh, I, I fired very few agents over the years, pro probably, uh, you know, just barely over a handful maybe. Um, and they had to be really bad um, either, <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll put up with a lot from, from a successful agent um, and, and really try to keep that relationship good. But, you know, an agent who can't sell, that's a headache, you know, it, it's fairly easy to let them go, but uh, you know, hired hundreds of agents. And to this day, I still couldn't tell you if someone's going to make it or not on day one, but give me 30 days, uh, and maybe even two weeks, you know, I, agents just come in with such a head of steam and they're going to be in the, you know, I, I still think, you know, even in this digital age and with all the technology we have, um, I still think there's a place for showing up and being in the office, you know, and being around other agents. And I think it's a, a great learning environment for, um, new agents and just creating that routine, you know, um, I, I've only run into uh, a few um, 
successful agents that that just worked from home. I've, I've only seen a few people that could really do it or, or work remotely, but you know, there, there are some that can do it. Uh, but, but I think it's very rare. Most of the successful agents I know have, have a routine that, you know, they come in the office, they've got a desk, they work, um, they have a routine and, um, you know, they just, like I said, I <laughs> mentioned yesterday in the Facebook post, one, one of our most successful agents right now um, is Shaquille Alston. And, you know, if, if you looked at his sales, I mean, he is covering like literally the whole state of Maine, it seems like. And, you know, uh, I, I actually don't know Shaquille that well. I don't know his family situation or if he's got kids or you know, uh, partner, or, you know, whatever, but it's like, you know, what, whatever he's got, they must be, you know, supportive or, you know, when you're young, you know, you can do that. And, uh, but I, from, from the looks of it, he's just working his tail off, you know, and, and to me that that's the biggest thing is, is to be willing to do that now, five years from now, you know, 10 years from now, he, you know, he'll be super successful and probably, you know, won't, won't be doing that, you know, but when, when you're just starting out, um, not, nothing replaces hard work and, and, and just grinding. It's, it's a little bit of a grind at first. So, um, I, I think that's the, you know, we could teach, we could teach anyone to do the paperwork. I mean, I mean, look at our contracts for God's sakes, you know, they're filling the blanks. I mean, they don't even trust us to, you know, they tell us we're not allowed to write addendums. Obviously we, we do, you know, uh, do that a little bit, but I mean, the, the business really isn't rocket science. It's, it's uh, you know, pretty much could be taught to anybody, but, you know, getting people to trust you, getting people to sign on the dotted line, you know, working hard, you know, those are things that, are, are kind of hard to teach people, people either trust you or, or, or they don't, but, but you got to show up, you got to be present and you got to be accessible and available. So other than that, I think anybody can do it. What are your goals for this year? Well, strangely enough. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so the first, <laughs> So the first time I was married, I, I was married for seven years and uh, I, I don't think anyone, you know, friends, family, uh, you know, I think they understood, uh, you, you know, when you get married as a teenager, like, you know, the, the odds of that working out, probably not too great. So I, I was divorced at 23, um, <laughs> met my second wife, you know, really quick, uh, jump, you know, right back into, you know, a relationship, you know way too quick, um, you know, in hindsight, but, um, you know, we, we had two beautiful children, uh, made two more boys, um, uh, really wanted a daughter. We adopted, um, from Vietnam. Um, so my daughter care is the only one left at home. She's 15, but, uh, Renee and I were married for over 20 years and, um, you know, un unfortunately it just, um, you know, the marriage didn't, didn't end up working out. Um, and, you know, I just found myself at a place in life where, um, you know, I wanted to be doing something different. Um, I, I love Maine. Um, I love it more from, you know, May to uh, October than, you know, any other time. And, um, so starting, you know, we, we always spend, uh, several weeks a year as a family, uh, you know, of course with, uh, you know, basically I had kids for, uh, you know, almost, you know, 30 years. I still do. I mean, it seemed like we did the, the universal Orlando, you know, Walt Disney, whatever, like every single year, um, uh, uh, so, you know, we got to spend some time in Florida. I just, the, the sun made me happy. And so, you know, one of my biggest goals has been, you know, to spend some time down here. And um, uh, so for, as a lot of, you know, I've been doing that and, you know, my goals have changed a little bit and you'll probably see it. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, you know, but uh, you know, you probably won't see me on the, top producer charts or, or the sales 
charts, uh, you know, hardly anymore. I mean, I'm going to do whatever business, you know, comes my way and, and keep in touch with my sphere. But um, pretty much at this point, I'm just trying to be the best designated broker that, that I can be. And, um, you know, if I, if I, if I'm smart with my money and I don't live outside my means, I can, I can get by, you know, that way. And, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm super happy right now. Like, you know, being able to, uh, to spend a lot of time down here in Florida while it's cold in Maine and still keep in touch with everyone and, and hopefully be, you know, a benefit, you know, to, to my company and agents and um, so, yeah, my, my goal is pretty much just to be a great designated broker and my, you know, if my sales suffer, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, Cause that's not really, you know, I had 20 plus years of, um, you know, selling a lot of real estate and, you know, I feel like I'm at a different, different stage right now. And, and, and I'm okay with that. Like I said, I, I, I it was always nice to be, you know, sort of an example and, you know, to have a lot of sales, but, uh, you know, hopefully nobody's, you know, I think they've got, you know, Josh and Carrie and Yvonne and, you know, just other agents in, in, you know, their offices to look up to now. I, I don't think I need to be that, that guy, um, at this stage of, of my life. So, um, so that's where I'm at. Awesome. Well, you talked a lot about your kids today. I know you have one kiddo who's in real estate. Do you think any yes. of your other kids will follow suit and get in? The I don't know. Um, my, my oldest, Matt, he's 34. He, he was licensed at one time. I, I really kind of discouraged him because it was, it was during the recession. Um, it was during the last market crash that we had. So um, that didn't work. I mean, I know how hard of, of, of a haul this is. I mean, again, I've been lucky. Um, but you know, it's not easy. I mean, it's definitely a sacrifice, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, they're all doing, you know, different things, you know, right now. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've got a 18 year old and a 20 year old that I think are, still kind of finding their way and figuring out what they want to do. I don't think that they're, uh, I, I don't think they've caught the real estate bug. <laughs> um, you know, but of course I've got my stepfather, I've got my, my stepsister, uh, Sheila, she's, she's been super successful. Um, her brother, um, uh, Mark's, uh, son is he's licensed. Um, one of my nieces is working on getting her license. So it's still, it's still kind of in the family, uh, blood, but I'm not sure how many of my, my kids other than Tom, who some of, you know, I mean, he's, he's super successful. Um, he's, he's an extrovert, uh, to, to the nth degree, not sure where he got that. Um, but not, not from me, but, um, but he's doing great. And, um, so, so yeah, no, I, I don't, uh, nobody else yet. <laughs> All right, any questions from anyone on the call here? Yeah. Nothing, Dan, I know you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call on you. I have a question. All right. Uh, when did you start becoming an entrepreneur? Like, when did you start having that mindset? When did you start working for yourself? Well, I think, I think that's actually been one of, one of my biggest, um, kind of, um, uh, that that's been one of the hardest things for me, uh, to, to a, a large degree. Um, I, you know, I probably grew up somewhat, uh, definitely not poor. I don't want to suggest that, but you know, definitely probably lower middle class. I mean, uh, you know, um, so my, my real dad died, uh, when I was three. Um, so I have just a couple of very fleeting memories or, um, uh, you know, thought thoughts of, of things that, that I think happened, you know, that, that I remembered even being that young, um, my, uh, my sister was, was, uh, one and, and my mom had had me when she was 16. So, 
so she was, you know, she was 19 years old. Um, her husband was just killed in a tragic construction accident. She got two little kids. Um, she uh, did get married again uh, a couple years later, um, but you know, to a to a not very uh, nice uh, guy. Um, that marriage eventually ended, and she met uh, my stepfather Mark. But you know, there there was a lot of times in there in between. You know, where she was a single mom. You know, working, doing her best to make ends meet. And you know, I mean, I always had a uh, you know good living situation. You know. Uh, you know, always had clothes on my body that might have been granimals or, you know, whatever, uh, never missed a meal, although we, you know, probably had, you know, lots of uh, Chinese pie and, and you know, uh, uh, macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, but, you know, so it was kind of a meager, you know, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't really, I, I have friends and, and, and stuff and some of our agents and, um, you know, one, one of my best friends, um, you know, has basically become a millionaire, um, you know, through, you know, buying and selling real estate and managing apartment buildings. And, you know, I always was fascinated by, I mean, I, I think his dad was self-employed, you know, insurance agent, whatever. So, you know, I just never, I, I hate to say it, I never really um, thought, I guess I never really thought that I would amount to much per se, um, which I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me because of that. But I just had, I never really had like these just huge, huge goals. I, I thought of going in the air force or maybe becoming a pilot or whatever, but um, uh, kind of uh, cr <laughs> cra crashed those dreams, I guess, by becoming a teen dad. But um, but yeah, so I never really, uh, becoming an entrepreneur was never something that I really set out to do, but the, the military experience was super hard. Um, but it definitely, you, you know, you go in the military, um, whatever your background is and, and certainly a lot of, I think, lower income, um, you know, kids do end up <clears throat> doing that. And, and, and if you don't have, you know, if you don't have another plan, it's not a bad, it, it's not a bad non-plan. Um, and, you know, you come out of there, I mean, they definitely build your confidence um, that you can do just about anything. And so I, I think probably if I had to pinpoint anything, I mean, definitely coming out of the military, um, I was, you know, super confident. And um, then once I did get into real estate, um, you know, opening my own company or whatever, uh, you know, taking charge of a, of a situation, uh, you know, being organized um, and, and things like that. I mean, er, in the military, everything has a checklist, everything, you know, has a procedure manual, you know, so, um, so yeah, c coming out of that, you know, is, is, you know, probably where I was able to, you know, I, I can't work for, for someone else. I can't really take orders from uh, somebody else. I, I, I did what I had to do and I did well in the military, but, uh, you know, after you get out of that experience, you, you don't really want to be back in a situation where, you know, where you have to uh, take orders from someone else. So being, being self-employed and being my own boss definitely, uh, definitely has been important to me uh, since then. All right, that sounds good. Now, how many hours average a week do you work as being um, your own boss? And Yeah, well, uh, on a, that, that, wow, putting me right on the spot. Um, I probably don't um, work that much, to be honest, um, you know, at, at this point, you know, I, I definitely feel like, like I said, I, I had, you, you know, uh, a decade or more where I was, you know, probably putting in, you know, 60 or 70 hours a week, which, you know, as we all know, as agents, it, it doesn't mean we're always working, but we're always like, you know, available and you, you know, sometimes you can just never fully relax. And it took me a long time to let go and, you know, um, you know, to not do everything myself, to not go to every building inspection myself or every showing myself or to trust someone to do my paperwork. So, you know, I worked a lot harder than, than I needed to. 
um, you know, just because I was such a control freak and people, you know, that have known me a long time, uh, you know, know that about me. And I wasn't always the funnest, uh, you know, person to be around, but I, I think I've learned to relax over the years. And at this point, I mean, uh, you know, I wake up every morning, you know, thankful that I have, you know, such a great company, um, such a great agent, such great, um, you know, uh, the owners of the other offices, like, you know, every once in a while, you know, an agent from another office will call me um, or reach out, but it's fairly rare. Uh, mostly, I just have to take care of my agents uh, in, in my office in Standish, and, and most of them have been with me for a while, and they're very good, and they don't need a lot of help. And so, like I said, where I'm not doing a lot of direct sales, um, you know, like I said, I try to be available. I mean, I was helping an agent last night at, you know, seven o'clock at night, you know, with a technology issue that, you know, that they had. And, and, you know, so I'll still always be available when I'm needed, you know, but yeah, I'm probably working, you know, really, really working, uh, you know, three or four hours a day, um, you know, Monday through Friday, not a lot on the weekends. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful, like I said, that I, I, I've kind of got it like that now and able to make ends meet. And, you know, like I said, if someone needs me on a Saturday or Sunday, I'm available. Um, but it just, it doesn't seem to happen a lot. We've got such great agents, um, you know, working for us that, uh, All right. yeah, I'm not killing myself these days. Yep. Uh, I have one more question. Um, do you have like a daily morning routine at all? Do you? You know, uh, I'm, I guess so. I mean, I, I wake up, uh, you know, I've, I've never really been a morning person. Um, of course, in the military, I had to get up really early. Uh, one of my first jobs when I got out of the military was uh, I worked for UPS loading trucks. So that was basically a third shift job. Um, I, I hated that job, but uh, the pay, the pay was good and the hours were good in that I still had all day to, to do real estate. Uh, but I've never really been a morning person. So that was, uh, for all the negatives about, you know, real estate, you know, being self-employed, you know, not having insurance or, you know, uh, paid vacations or whatever. And, ha you know, having to work so many hours, uh, not having to get up early or, you know, be racing to commute with everybody else. Um, I always like that and I, I still do. So I, you know, I'm probably more of a night owl, um, you know, stay up late, um, you know, don't get out of bed till 730 or eight, but I'll, uh, you know, I, I love the news. I try to keep up with what's going on in the world. Um, you know, I read the local stuff. I read the national stuff, check my email. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the things that's always, I've always liked about real estate is every day is a little bit different. Um, you know, not that I want fires to, to put out or, or for, you know, things to be going wrong, but, uh, you know, usually there is something uh, that needs to be, you know, handled. And uh, so just, you know, being able to, to be flexible and jump on whatever's going on or whoever, you know, is in need of, you know, uh, probably all yesterday morning, I was dealing off and on with one agent who, you know, had listed two properties over the weekend, had multiple offers on both, you know, had a bunch of issues and questions. And, um, you know, so just the fact that I had the flexibility to be available to, you know, to help them, um, to, you know, to me, I feel like that's my kind of my highest calling, uh, you know, right now is, is to be available to do that. So any other questions? Nothing. All right. Anything else, Bill, that you wanted to touch on? I don't think, we haven't talked yeah. about yet? I don't think so. Thanks for everyone who came and for making this pretty easy on me and for Josh and Carrie for, and, and Steven for uh, keeping the questions coming. And, uh, you know, again, if any of you that are on here today who haven't been through this process and would be willing or like to do it, uh, let me know. And, uh, yeah, and also I was thinking even maybe opening up to interviewing other people in our industry um that's a good idea 
you know, lenders, title people, insurance, and maybe just learning a little bit more um, about how we fit into their business and what they like in agents and I don't know, just to be more skilled agents. So something like yeah, that. That, that. That's a great idea. We do have a title person coming up. Uh, geez, I can't remember exactly in the next, <laughs> in the next few weeks, we've got a title class uh, scheduled. Um, so I think, I think, you know, some interesting things will come out of that too. I know I've got a, a bunch of questions that, you know, that, that I, I want to, I want to know the answers to. Um, so, so yeah, well, yeah, that's a great idea. Get a lender on here, maybe, and some other folks. Awesome. Well, I learned a lot of things about you today, Bill. So this is oh. great. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for joining us. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Okay. Bye guys. See you. Bye. Take it easy. Bye.